G'day, g'day folks, Lone Mojo here, and in today's video, I'm gonna be taking a look at Seven Days to Die, and in particular, looking at the skills and how they work. Now, I've just bought into a random new world, a brand new character, so I've got a few skill points to spend, and in the video, I'm gonna talk about, specifically, some good skill points to consider going um, down for your first game, and on top of that, uh, I'll be looking at how some of these skill points affect your crafting. So, let's kick on. To to get into the skills, you go press tab, get to your character sheet, and it's the last option here called skills. Now, skills are broken up into effectively five categories, being perception, strength, uh, fortitude, agility, intellect, and then you've got perk books at the end, and I'll talk about those uh, in just a little bit. So, how do these all work? Well, let's go over to strength and have a look. Looking at this sheet, you can see that I've got one point in strength, and you'll have one point in each of these um, attributes by default. But I've got one point in strength, and you can see over in this window, I'm classed as a weakling. Um, as you level these up, you'll find that you get a better bonus. For example, I do 200% headshot damage, but if I get to level two, I'll do 210% headshot damage. And as you go further down, you unlock new abilities. Additionally, each uh, each of the attributes has a bunch of skills that you can learn that are specific skills. So, for example, I've got the, the boomstick option here, which is uh, makes you better with a shotgun. You've got pummel peat, which makes you better with clubs and bats, etc. Uh, and a bunch of others. I won't go into all of them. But what I do want to talk about is how these affect your crafting. So if we go back to our, our character's crafting screen, and by default, you'll see that although I don't have the resources for it, I can currently craft a pipe shotgun. You can craft pipe weapons right from the get-go. However, all of the other shotguns have a little lock symbol. It's kind of hard to see there because of the background, but further down, you can see that the double barrel shotgun is locked, as is the pump action. If I click on these, I can see that I need a recipe book for the pump action, uh, for the auto shotgun. But if I go to the double barrel, I can unlock it through Boomstick as a skill. So let's go over and have a look at what that means. If I go over to Boomstick here and hover over here, you'll see that the very last line says, unlock double barrel shotgun crafting. So you'll find that as you level these up, you won't be unlocking any new recipes for shotgun, but what it will mean is that the shotguns that you craft will be of better level. So for example, by default, I'd craft a level one. If I unlock this, I can now craft level two shotguns. If I unlock this, I can craft level three and so on. Now, the important thing to note is that these affect all shotguns. So if I've got to boomstick mastery, but I've only got the double barrel shotgun, I can make a level six double barrel. Uh, however, if I got the schematics for the auto shotgun, I can instantly make level six auto shotguns as well. So... This is a really good way of um, focusing your character's build. And it's also really handy when you've got a group to have a bit of variety. So let's say someone's going for um, Deadeye, which is rifles. You can have someone crafting high-end rifles for, for your whole group. Uh, they Not everyone needs that skill set. Now, the last section here is the skill book section. And these are only obtained in the world. In fact, I might just try my luck here. And we'll see if we can find one in this letterbox. You often find some in letterboxes. Perfect. So this is called Needle and Thread Volume 5. I'll just bring that into my inventory. And if we go and look at the Skills tab and look on Books here, you'll find Needle and Thread. And you'll see there's seven books in this. So if I read that, I will unlock Volume 5, which will allow me to craft dusters. So let's do that. And we'll just use that. And you'll see now needle and thread is one of seven and dusters is crafted. Now these are really interesting because once you get all seven books, you'll get a bonus. Now some of them are a bit hit and miss. You can craft military clothing isn't that great. However, if you go to the art of mining, you've got a 20% chance of one-shotting any ore, which is massive, especially in a harder difficulty. So these are another way of um, focusing your character. So here we have another book, another needle and thread. And I'm gonna move it into my inventory. And 
you'll see in the corner here, it's got a picture of a closed book. That uh, signifies that I haven't learnt that skill yet. Um, I'm going to try and pot luck, guess one more um, mailbox and hope to get a duplicate. Let's see how we go. <laughs> I'm going to get all the needle and threads at this rate. So if I had read this skill book and already had acquired that skill, that book would be open. So it's a really quick and easy way for you to work out whether you've got the skill or not. So then the next question becomes, what are, what are good skills to get for your first game? And there's a few that are worth getting straight off the bat. So let's go have a look at them. Firstly, one of the things you're going to do a lot of is um, collecting resources, in particular, maybe mining or cutting down trees. So I would put at least one point into sexual Tyrannosaurus. Um, it's great for melee. It, it's about stamina usage. The higher you've got it, the, um, the, the less stamina you use. So the longer you can keep doing things. I would consider getting one level in Master Chef, especially if you're playing solo. This will let you bake some really basic food, such as uh, baked potato, cornbread, uh, bacon and eggs. And these are going to be really important early game to supplement the food that you can um, that you can find. Because, you know, there's going to be times when you've got a lot of meat and you're going to want to do something with it. And they are going to be better for you in terms of um, energy. So that's Sexual Tyrannosaurus, Master Chef. I would consider either one of Minor 69er or Mother Load. Um, these are all about, um, Minor 69er increases the tools that you can craft. Better tools means better resource gathering. And it also increases the amount of block damage. So that means that damage that you do to a block, such as the ground or trees, and the more damage you do, the faster you'll knock it down and the more resources you'll get. Uh, my, uh, Mother Load is specific to... Um, digging up stone and ore. Um, and you'll harvest more resources from it. So that's those two are quite good as well, worth considering. The last one I would recommend doing is in agility, which is archery. Okay, A bow is an early game weapon that you're going to get and it's going to be incredibly useful, especially when you're first uh, um, exploring houses. You're going to need a decent bow and the ability to... Um, do stealth shots, do you know, stealth headshots will really minimize the damage that these zombies are going to do to you early game. So I would be considering it on a fresh build, when I'm playing solo, I would consider a point in Sexual Tyrannosaurus, a point in Master Chef, um, maybe one point in either Minor 69 or a Mother Load, and then I would put a point into Archery. From there, it's up to you the way you want to build. Um, there are options around things like going down your tech tree. So, for example, um, trying to get engineering so you can get some of the for things like forges, etc. But in theory, everything can be found. And in my looting video, I'll talk about how loot drops work and looting level. But just know that if you don't take forge, as if you don't take um, advanced engineering level one to get the forge, you can still find a forge recipe. So you're not going to be locked out of things. It just means you've got to go out and find the recipe. So there's ways and means to do that. Anyway, folks, hopefully that gives you some uh, good information on the leveling system, the XPs, etc. It's worth noting that they're probably going to change this in patch 21. So uh, this is current for now for alpha 20, but in alpha 21, that may change. So in that situation, I'll, uh, I'll update this video accordingly. But that should get you going. And until next time, take care.